Good morning, I'm Tom at Ledgemere. Today we're gonna to take a Cole 12 MX Multiflex planter and plant beans. I'm gonna show you setup, operation, maintenance, troubleshooting, all those things. Stick around and let's get to it. Before I use this every year, and I didn't grease it last year, but I should have. So before I use this every year, I, I take it apart and lubricate it. I, I hit it with some lubricant in the fall before I put it away, but it's always a good idea to go through everything in the spring before you start using it. The newer ones have a snap ring on it or one of those uh, hitch pins, hitch clips. This old one has a roll pin on it, so it makes it a little bit more difficult, but it's not undoable. So we're gonna take this wheel off. There's two of these press wheels be real careful when you spin this because this cleaner right here will get your fingers as well as this clamp and the bolt right here so be super careful when you're putting it on and off to not get your fingers stuck in there so here you can see the drive mechanism it's wheel driven so this press wheel right here operates this shaft which operates the, the drop for the planter it also operates this right here which is your fertilizer hopper. So we're gonna go ahead and put some axle grease on this. And I just use these brushes. I, I'm kind of partial to them myself. You don't need to be crazy with it, but you wanna make sure that you got enough on there to do the trick. And so while I'm in here, I'm also gonna hit these gears. If you can find yourself a good, a good lubricant that doesn't attract dirt, then all the better. So here you can see this gear right here, and what this gear does, this gear is run off the shaft driven by the press wheel, and this gear right here will change the ratio of the revolutions that your seed plate turns. So it depends upon what seed plate you're using, how many cells are in it, and that will determine the, the, the spacing of your seeds. So there's an eight, a 10, a 12, and I think, I think there's a 14 tooth gear, and I, I have them down back. I, I have the 12, the 12 in, and that usually gives me the seed spacing that I want. So to change that, you can see it drops down right here. There's a bolt there with a nut on the other side, so you loosen that up, drop this down, and then this just pops off the end, and you can change out your uh, your seed spacing gear. But mine's all set, so I'm just going to put a little bit of lubricant on it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put this press wheel back on. And you may have to give it a little tap, but be careful when you hit it because this is all cast and you don't want to crack it. Put that roll pin back. So this is an older style. The new ones have springs on them and the, the drop tube is, is rubber. The way you adjust your depth for your sword here is you loosen up this carriage bolt and this carriage bolt. And then this one's a little bit rusty, but then you just pound it down to the desired depth that you want. And then you bolt it back up. All right, I don't know if this came this way or if it was a farmer modification, but you can see it's just a, a carriage bolt in there. And those threads probably do wonders for the bushing inside of this, because I can see it's already all gacked up in there. Also, be careful when you double wrench that, because this is just uh, sharp sheet metal, and so when you pop that off with the wrenches and the wrench slips off like it always does, you're going to slice your thumb. So... Word to the wise, either wear gloves or come up with a plan B. Wash it here. On that, just because, so next year when I take it off, it'll be a little easier for me. Those of you who watch the channel realize that I, I use Never Seize. I should buy stock in Never Seize because I, I put it on everything. So this is called your fertilizer side placer disc. And so it has to be behind the sword on the right hand side and in front of your press wheel. But we want it to turn pretty freely. We don't want it binding up in there, so that looks pretty good. And then we'll just double nut it again. And the way your fertilizer, um, your side dresser works is as the wheel's turning, it turns a shaft here, turns a, a disc on the bottom, and then you've got an adjustment here on the side. So I think you can go between like 60 or 35 and 300 pounds per acre. I always put it lower rather than higher. I can always come back and add a little bit more later. But so this disc in here is turning and it's dropping fertilizer down this, this little gutter pipe here and it drops it right there 
in behind the sword and in front of this this side um, placer. All right, so it looks like setup's complete. Everything's lubricated. This right here is free to slide up and down over the terrain as it's supposed to. Now again, you can use this singularly or you can use it in uh, multiple in a row on a, on a toolbar. All right, so inside your seed plate hopper, here's your drive gear here. And this is driven off this cog down here. So I always want to try to put just a little bit of lubricant on that. And with this one, I use garage door um, lubricant and it's Teflon. It's not the greatest lubricant in the world, but it also repels water and dust. And what we don't want is any of that stuff in there. So this is going to spin on that, on that metal right there. So we're just going to cover that and that'll drain out while I'm putting this back together. We could get into an hour long debate about which, uh, lubricant is the best for which purpose. There's so many different lubricants and so many different opinions that whatever you decide is, is your preferred lubricant. And that's what you should put in there. Now these C plates, like I said, there's, there's some that are set up for multiple purpose. There's some that are specific and this right here is for snap beans or bush beans. So you can see there's four little studs there and that'll line up with this. I'm going to put a washer on and the next thing we put on is this this cover right here and this is important when you put this on to get it up snug don't over crank it because it's, again it's cast iron you'll break it divider here and this goes in now if you look on this you'll see here's the the bolt that's you know the threaded bolt that's sticking through and then there's this little little uh, bump here that bump should line up with one of these second holes and these are just sheet metal, so sometimes it takes a little bit of working to get it in there. Now, what's so important about getting that in there? I'm glad you asked. Well, what you don't want to happen is you don't want this right here to be turning with that, because what will happen is eventually it'll tighten up upon itself, and the press wheel will stop turning, and the whole thing will bind up. Get that in there. That can't go anywhere anymore. We'll spin it a couple times. Again, be careful when you put your fingers back here, because... It will pinch and it will hurt. I plant my wax and green beans together. It doesn't bother me. I actually like those purple beans. They, they are purple on the vine so you can see them. And then when you cook them, they turn green. It's really intriguing to me. Then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put fertilizer in there if you should decide to use fertilizer. I always use 10-10-10 all-purpose fertilizer. Your choice, whether or not you use fertilizer or the type of fertilizer that you put in, I just have historically always had good luck with all-purpose 10-10-10 fertilizer. The trick with commercial chemical fertilizer is you don't want to leave it in there too long because it'll rot your hoppers out. All right, so a couple troubleshooting tips. Let's say the, the planter is not dropping seeds correctly or the fertilizer is not working right. The first thing you want to do is make sure this is level. So when you drop a hitch down, it has to set level. Make sure that this is all free to turn. And then you can spin it a couple times and see if you see seeds and things coming out. Like I see seeds coming up the, the hill there and that drops the seeds out. So we know that's all working. Fasten that down. Make sure this is secured correctly. Again, make sure you've got that piece of sheet metal so that the little pin there is, is engaged in one of those holes. Otherwise, what can happen is that clamp will turn and tighten itself up on your, your um, disc, on your planter plate, and it'll freeze everything up solid. So this right here floats pretty well the way it's designed. But again, make sure everything's flat, make sure everything's turning correctly. Make sure that you have everything uh, set according to the instructions. And I think you can download those digitally online. So I'm gonna head. Once I finish with the beans, I'm gonna start with Silver Queen on this side. The sun comes up over here and it moves that way. The Silver Queen takes longer and it's also a shorter uh, stalk. So I'm gonna put the sunflowers further down and in the middle, I'm gonna put the earlier corn. Now, the thing is, when you start looking at different corns you plant, 
you want to make sure that if they are mature and around the same date that you stagger the, the planting so you otherwise you'll get cross pollination so if you plant one variety like a, some kind of bilicious and like a peaches and cream or something and let's say they they're both 87 days let's just say they're 87 days you plant them both once those tassels come up and they start cross pollinating you're going to find something a little different than what you planted so you either should stagger it a week or two or plant another variety that takes longer or is, is shorter so what i'm doing right now is i'm planting silver queen that takes way longer than the early corn, so I don't have to worry about any of that cross-pollination. Every season, because I've used the tractor for other things and the planter's been stored, it always takes me a row or two to get everything set right and trying to like look behind you and plant and drive the tractor straight is, uh, well, it's, it leaves a little bit to be desired, I guess. Uh, so the first couple rows look like, uh, looks like I had a couple of grandpa's cough medicine. So I straighten them out as I get back here. I'm gonna do one more row with you and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you away. Uh, hopefully this has been uh, educational for you. Hopefully this has been educational for you and useful. Just remember patience is key. You can't just throw everything together and jump out there and start planting because you'll be met with disappointment. So uh, make sure you go through all your steps, everything's set up properly, and then you have to make adjustments as you go. Thanks for watching. I'll leave you some parting shots. I'll talk to you next time and I'm going to give you a plug to subscribe for the channel. Thanks a lot and I hope you have a great day.